Okay, Chrysler Dodge Ram 2004, nine and a quarter inch differential. Notice the inner bearing race spinning in the housing. Um, took some measurements of both the inner and the outer. Uh, the inner is pretty much, it's not spinning. Um, it's almost, uh, it's like the clearances, they're both at the same almost pretty much there's like hardly any interference um maybe in some places it's like kind of out of round between zero to three thousandths of interference uh on the outer the inner one here uh that one has anywhere from like nine to i don't even know it's kind of hard to say it's like it's almost tapered downwards the closer part right here is pretty much in spec has like a nice interference but the further in you go um it almost kind of tapers down and that's where the race seats and it, it spins by finger you know minimal force to spin it so uh bought some 680 did some research um 620 from what it sounds like is for things that you know have a uh you know, uh, a slight interference or, you know, they're tight fitting parts. Um, the 680 is good for parts that require essentially a, a tolerant, you know, a tight tolerance fit, but they're worn or loose. Um, this right here is good up to about, I believe, 350, maybe 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, probably, you know, temp diff shouldn't be getting nearly that hot. Maybe, you know, tops 120, 140. You know, uh, all depends on how hot, you know, it could get up to 160 degrees. Uh, this also has 4,000 PSI shear strength, and it can fill gaps up to 0.25 millimeters. I don't know what the conversion on that is. I think it's like 19 thousandths or something like that. Um, so we're going to generously apply it to the inner bearing race and lightly apply it to the outer bearing race. So as you can see, these are some of the tools you're going to need. Um, it's a Max Seal bearing, uh, bearing race and seal driver set. Uh, one of them there is just about perfect to fit the outer bearing race. Um, I had to buy an Icon kit because the Mac one didn't have a, a disc large enough. And this one actually didn't quite fit very well. So I had to machine it down on my lathe. Came out pretty good. Fits very well and I'm sure it'll get the job done. And I also like how it has this nice extended handle. Um, I might add a little bit of heat to the bearing journals there. Kind of help, you know, speed things up and also, uh, you know, expand the, the metal a little bit. I have the races in the freezer right now. I'm going to be pulling them out and we're going to pretty much uh, wipe them down with a little bit of contact cleaner. And then... We'll go ahead and apply some of this 680. Okay, here's the new race. Nice and clean, it's hit with a little bit of contact cleaner. Still pretty cold because it just came out of the freezer. Uh, gonna go ahead and apply some of the 680 to the bearing race and the inner diameter of the differential housing journal and drive this fucker in. Okay, nice coat. Hopefully that takes up that, you know, 10,000 scat. It's supposed to be permanent. We're gonna go ahead and apply some to the outer diameter here. Okay, nice even coat. All right, let's rock and roll. Okay, put it in by hand. Let's go ahead and drive it in. Okay, there it is. I want to say it's fully seated. Can't even move this fucker now. I could, I can instantly tell trying to put it in with the Loctite. It instantly just putting it on was filling that gap. A lot different. I, I can feel it snug. So that stuff hardens 4,000 psi. I feel confident it'll probably fill up that gap. Who knows? This is the test. See how many miles we get out of it. Let's go ahead and do the. Uh, Enter one or the uh, outer bearing race now. Okay. Checked it out with the mirror. Looks like it's nice and flush. 
fully seated all the way around. And looks good. All right. So the whole trick I'm thinking is while that stuff's still wet, I think it says it takes what six hours to form like a good bond and then 24 hours to fully cure. So clock's ticking, let's get that front one in. Get the pinion gear in and torque it down and get the you know the, the preload on the bearings so it kind of centers that and holds it in place and everything's nice and square. Uh, the squares it's gonna be um, you know, and hopefully it sets in place with the Loctite 680 and, you know, there's no crazy deflection or backlash or run out and everything stays nice and true. Hopefully we'll get 10 years or 100,000 miles out of our Mopar. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do that front one. Woo. Okay, there it is. But just a little bit of a Loctite 680 inner and outer. All right, a little bit on the inside there. We're gonna hook this one up. Okay, a little bit of a lighter coat on this assembly here. Let's go ahead and drive it in. We're gonna be using the Mack driver on this one. You can go ahead and put a little bit of grease on the driver surface, kind of help uh, protect the race and the tool. All right, let's go ahead and pound that fucker in. Nice Mac driver, perfect fit. Clears that lip there on the outside. Fits perfect on the inside. I feel like we're fully seated there, should be good. Yep, squeeze that Loctite out. Let's go ahead and wipe it up. How about on the other side? Uh, thinking, yeah, we can probably wipe it down maybe just a little bit. And then, you know, residual. We'll just have to change the oil once it breaks down. The stuff inside is going to fully cure. So how this stuff works is it, it cures in the absence of oxygen. So... Obviously, being outside here, it's oxygen, oxygenated, you know, we're not on Mars, so stuff technically on the outside there, probably, you know, probably eventually cure, um, but it's going to take a lot longer than the stuff that's in the inside with the absence of oxygen. It'll start to, uh, you know, cure chemical reaction, and then by tomorrow around this time, it'll be uh, good to go for, for use, essentially. Um, but we're going to go ahead and put the pinion bearing or the uh, pinion bearings and the seal right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and slip the pinion gear from the back and then start that process. Okay, new bearing for the outer, outer pinion bearing. We're gonna go ahead and pre-lube it up a tad bit for breaking. Okay, pinion bearing in, greased for breaking. And you'll know you'll have enough grease, you know, freeze spins pretty easily before you put the grease. And then once you pack it in there pretty nice, you'll feel uh, quite a bit of resistance. And then I just pack the top of it there. And then uh, one more thing before we put in the seal. We're going to put some gasket cinch. Okay, new seal. Gasket cinch. Just going to apply a little bit to the... Uh, outer surface there it'll help with sliding it in and also help seal if you have any nicks or pitting or any imperfections in the uh, inner diameter journal housing there so pretty much too you'll need your we're pretty much using the Mac um, or no the icon and for the inner bearing race uh, driver we just all we did was just sw switch it around you know switch it around on the driver and then we'll be using that to pound in this race here and that should be pretty much it make sure you have your bearing in there and your race obviously before you pound in this and then obviously 
um, using this type of driver you can only do that without the painting gear installed if you have yours installed there's a different method and tool to drive in this uh, this seal here so we're gonna go ahead and drive it in okay it's a little bit of gasket cinch kind of wet the whistle not too much not too little I'm on the light side let's put it in okay easy does it fully seated very nice so the trick to it kind of take a smaller 16 ounce ball peen hammer kind of just tap it in make sure it's even then you use your seal driver pick which way you know you're struggling that seems to be going seemed like the upper side didn't want to go in so I kind of focused on that then once I knew it was you know pretty good um, use this bag boy I forget what this is like a pound or something like that pound and a half it's a little well that, that's 16 ounce I think this is a 24 and this right here easily knocked it in as you can see fully seated uh, didn't damage anything nicely intact so now um, it's probably been about an hour or so since we uh, locked tied those bearing races in so still got a while we're gonna go ahead and throw the pinion in now see what happens okay back to this side in our bearing race put a little bit of grease pinion new bearing shim watch my other video on how I did that all right, let's go ahead and grease it up, put it in. Here's our uh, main flange. Went ahead and it's not too, I mean, it has a little bit of scoring. I mean, it wasn't leaking after I replaced the seal and did have a lot of slop. So I went ahead and polished it lightly. Some red uh, on the buffing wheel. Not too bad, should be just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and grease that up the assembly together don't forget your crush washer on the pinion and then we're gonna go ahead and put a new nut original washer Let's rock and roll okay pinion bearing nicely greased up uh, maybe we can throw a little bit more grease on it okay new crush sleeve go ahead and lightly pull a little bit of grease there we go. That looks a lot better. All right, let's put this bad boy in. Hmm. Might need to support it while I go work on the other side. All right, so pretty much you want to wipe out the seal one last time and then we're going to go ahead and use the light oil and use some MPPL use a WD-40 diff oil transmission oil go ahead and lube up that seal and then uh, go ahead and put the companion flange on I'm also going to go ahead and put some anti-seize high temp on the thread or on the splines and then uh, we'll go ahead and rock and roll okay went ahead and lubed up the flange pulled it through a little bit more should I say loot up the oil seal? Using a Loctite LB771 nickel anti seize just for a high tap. I'm gonna use this on the splines. Okay, so not too much, but you definitely want to put you know a generous amount on the inside. Just the splines, wipe away the extra. Alright, impact gun. Can't fully get it. There's about a quarter of an inch to go before it actually seats. So we're going to put this device on and try to do it by hand see what we can do.